I made up my mind that I was going to drive, I set about collecting my outfit. My first step toward this was to round up 50 or 60 good horses. Then the mess wagon was made ready with provisions. For instance, when the Goodnight Trail was laid off, I had to prepare for a 600 mile stretch between settlements. Meantime, I informed my neighbor Stockman that I was to drive to a northern market and would receive any cattle they wanted to go with the herd, arranging for the concentration of the herd at some given point where the cattle were driven through a chute and branded with the trail or road brand. I was never over three days in putting the average herd of 3,000 head together. We always tried to reach water before sundown. This gave us ample time to have the cattle filled and everything arranged for a pleasant night. The herd was put in a circle, the cattle being a comfortable distance apart. At first, when the cattle were fresh, I used the double guard. That is, half the men guarded the first part of the night, the other half the latter part. In storms or stampedes, we were all on duty. After the herd had been out for 15 days, it was trail broke and four men were sufficient to guard 3,000 head of cattle. And after two or three months, two men at a time were sufficient. It was my practice to use standing guards. The men who had first watched the first night would have it all through the drive. If you left the choice to the old hands, they invariably chose the standing guard. Ordinarily, each guard stood two hours at a time and a little over. We never had any watch to go by, but divided the time by the dipper. The last guard was the shortest, for each relief stood a little over time to be sure they were not calling the next guard out too soon. After we had been out a while, the men could easily stay awake. In fact, the habit became so firmly fixed that if in camp they would wake at the regular time and would not be able to sleep during their watch. They rode around the herd facing each other and in this way passed twice in one complete circuit. It was a rough, Hard, adventurous life, but not without its sunny side. And when everything moved smoothly, the trip was an agreeable diversion from the monotony of the range. But things did not always move smoothly. The stampede was especially guarded against during the first 10 days or so of the drive. The cattle were nervous and easily frightened, and the slightest noise might startle them into running. Some were stampeders by nature. Hence, everybody was on the alert and if we succeeded in holding the herd together the first two weeks, we seldom experienced trouble from stampedes further along the trail. The men slept on the ground with their horses staked nearby. Sometimes the demands were so urgent that our boots were not taken off for an entire week. Nerves became so tense that it was a standing rule that no man was to be touched by another when asleep until after he had been spoken to. The man who suddenly aroused a sleeper was liable to be shot as all were thoroughly armed and understood the instant use of revolver and rifle. I had system on my drives. My friends often laughed about it, but the most successful drives were always systematically ordered. We ate breakfast just as the day broke. The pointers and two other men who were to relieve the last night guard ate at once. If there were no signs of Indians, the herd was started from the bed grounds and put to grazing as soon as possible. When in danger of an attack, the herd was kept on the bed ground until all hands were mounted and around them. The cattle were always headed toward the course we were taking. The men ate, saddled, and fell into place promptly. It is remarkable that during my years on the trail, I rarely had a man who would shirk his duty. Had he been so inclined, he would have been ridiculed out of it. It is certain that no deadheads ever stayed in a cow camp any length of time. All in all, my years on the trail were the happiest I have lived. There were many hardships and dangers, of course, that called on all a man had of endurance and bravery, but when all went well, there was no other life so pleasant. Most of the time we were solitary adventurers in a great land as fresh and new as the spring morning, and we were free and full of the zest of darers. <laughs>